In this video, I will be showing you how you could build a web application that will be able to merge several spreadsheet files in Microsoft Excel format. And we're going to be building this in Python using the Streamlit library. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is fire up the terminal. And you want to go to the folder of the Streamlit Merge Excel application. And so I have it on desktop and in the Streamlit folder on my computer. And it's within the Excel File Merge folder. And let's have a look here. So you can see here that we have the app file and then we're going to be generating some intermediate Excel files and the zip files will be containing several Excel files. And so I have a Jupyter notebook that will show you how you could generate this particular zip file that contains multiple Excel files. And so why don't we delete the intermediate Excel files for now? All right, and here we have it. The two files here are the app files and the zip file of multiple Excel files. So let me run the app now. And so the first thing I have to do is activate the Conda environment. And my Conda environment is called Data Professor. So I'm going to activate that. And so make sure that you activate your own Conda environment. And now to run the application, I type in Streamlit run app.py. All right, and it's loading up. So in a nutshell, what you're going to be building today is a web application that will take several Excel files, merging the contents into a single file, and then saving it out as an Excel file that the user can then download at the end. So let's show how we could do this. So let me go to the folder, Excel file merge, and then we're going to be dragging and drop the NBA data. So before doing that, let me unzip the contents here so that you can see. And so here you see that there's NBA data sets from 1950 until 2019. And so let's have a look at the latest one. Okay, so this is the data for 2019. And so we have here, let's see how many columns do we have here? We have 29 columns. And let's have a look how many rows do we have? 709 rows. Okay, so this is for 2019. And so here we can see the data of the various basketball players, the positions, the age, the team, and all of this. Okay, so in this app, we're going to be just stacking multiple Excel files on top of one another, meaning that the contents of one Excel file will be pasted at the bottom, like here, let me show you. So the contents of 2019 will be pasted below the year 2018, and 2018 will be pasted below 2017. Okay, so let me show you by stacking another Excel file. Let's open up 2018. Let's see. All right, here you go. So this is the contents of 2018. And this is 2019. And let me open up 2017. Okay, so by stacking the contents, I mean that we're literally going to be keeping the number of columns to be the same and that the contents of 2018 would then be under 2017, like here. So why don't I copy and paste manually to show you? So this is the content of 2018. So theoretically, we're going to be doing like this. We're going to paste the contents of 2018 underneath 2017. Okay, like, like so. And then on the last column, we're going to be putting in the name of the file, like this belongs to NBA 2018. And so we're going to have the name of the file on the far right column, like here. Okay, like, oh. 
like this. And then let me do the same for 2017. NBA 2017. Like this. Okay. And then we could call this like notes. Like that. Okay. And then the same for 2019, it will be under 2018, okay? So essentially all of the files in this folder will be combined into a single file. And so if we were to do this manually, you see that it might be taking you an entire day or at least several hours in order to do while also being boring as well and also error prone. And so how can we make this more efficient? Well, we could code it and we can make a web application that would do that automatically without being tired. Okay, so let me show you. All right, so let me delete the contents of this folder. Okay. So I'll provide you the links to the Jupyter Notebook so that you could generate your own zip file. And so you could run that Jupyter Notebook on your local computer or also on Google Colab. And so it will essentially generate this NBA data.zip file. Okay, and so let's try out the application. So all we need to do is just drag and drop the zip file into this area on the left panel. And then the file will be uploaded. And then we click on submit button and then the web app will be running. So you see here that an intermediate Excel file has been generated. And you can see the merged data frame is shown here. And there are 26,000 rows. Okay, so the contents of all of the Excel files were stacked on top of one another. So from the year 1950 until 2019. And so therefore we have over 26,000 rows of data. And finally, we outputted the contents of the merged data frame into CSV format and also Microsoft Excel format. Okay, and so let's try out by downloading both here. CSV file and Excel file. Okay, so both were downloaded successfully. And you can see here that the Excel file occupied 4.2 megabytes and the Excel file was 3.4 megabytes. And so let's open up the Excel file. And so this is the merged version. And we can see here that there is the last column that contains the file name so that we can know which file the contents are coming from. And then you can see that there are 26,000 rows. Okay, and the file name is also at the far right. Right, so you can see that they're not yet sorted according to the notes here. And you could also do that in Excel or you could also do that in Python, whereby you could customize this web application to do aggregate functions, to do other exploratory data analysis, or also display some cool visuals as well from the combined data. You could also compare data from various years as well. And so I'll leave that up to you. Feel free to customize this web application and you could include this as part of your own data science portfolio. So let me show you a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the code. And so before doing that, let me show you the contents of the merged CSV file. And so here we have it. Okay, this is the merged CSV file. Okay, and so let's get started. And so this is the app.py and you can see here that the several lines at the top will be importing the necessary libraries that we're going to be using today. And that includes the pandas data frame, which we're going to be using from pandas library. And we have Streamlit, which is the web framework that is the basis of this application. The zip file library, because we're going to be unzipping the file, base64, and also the OS library, because we're going to be getting the working directory path. And we're also going to be encoding and decoding the generated data frame that we have merged from several Excel files in order to provide it as a downloadable file in the Streamlit application.
All right, and so lines eight through 17 is displaying the top part of this web application. So it's displaying the name of the application, Excel file merger, the description of the application, and also the credit of this application. Okay, so you could feel free to modify this web application with additional features and functions. And I greatly appreciate that if you could also leave the credits in your application as well. And you could say modified from this tutorial from Data Professor and Cheninan Tasenman, which is my name, so that other interested individuals can also have access to this particular video. And also the proper credit is given all right, and so let's continue. Lines 19 until 32 is going to be a custom function that will perform the actual merger of the Excel files and other additional custom functions that we're going to be using is the file download as a CSV file and also the file download as an Excel file. And the actual core part of the code is just right here because we're making use of the custom function and therefore the actual code that will be running the functions of the application will just take a couple of lines that you see here, less than 10 lines. Okay, because the core functions will be performed by the various custom function. And because we create custom functions here and here and here, the benefit is that we could just repurpose the function in another web application. So as you can see from prior tutorials, I've also made use of this CSV file download. And in this particular tutorial video, I've modified this CSV function in order to allow us to export it as an Excel file. And you can see here that these are the modifications that I have made, okay? And so let's go into detail of custom function that allows you to merge the Excel files. So we created the custom function to be called Excel file merge, and it's going to be taking in the input argument as the name of the zip file. And so here on line 59, you see that we're going to be creating a data frame variable that will essentially be the contents of the uploaded file. And we are using the Excel file merge function that we created above and apply this particular function, Excel file merge function on the uploaded file right here, the file that we dragged and dropped in this particular position. And so the uploaded file, let me go back up. So the file upload will be on lines 34 and 39. So here we specified that we're having the st.sidebar.header so that we have the header here to be upload your zip file. And then we have a small description, Excel containing zip file, which is right here. And then the type of the file is zip file. Okay, and then we have an example Okay, so I have to change this to the example zip file of the NBA data set. So I'm going to be uploading that to GitHub and I'll replace that in place of here. And then I'm going to upload the updated file onto GitHub. And so here we write in Markdown the link in Markdown format to the example zip file. And the uploaded file variable that you saw earlier on right here, line number 59, is the file that is uploaded to the server, which is the zip file will be dragged and dropped in this position. And so this is made possible by the file uploader function of Streamlit library. Okay, so now that we have the zip file in the uploaded file variable, then we call the Excel file merge function. And therefore the Excel file merge function will be performing its various duties on the uploaded file. And let's take a look at what it is doing here. So it's going to be creating a empty data frame and then it's going to take in the zip file, define the zip file, and then it's gonna define the zip file as F. And what it's going to do now is it's going to list the contents of the zip file. And then we're going to be running a for loop whereby for each iteration, it will do the following for each of the Excel file. So earlier on, we taken a look at the zip file. And so we saw that there are several Excel files, 1950, 1951, 1952, until 2019. And so for each iteration here, denoted by file, in each iteration, each of the file of Excel file, 1950, 1951, 1952, each file that has the suffix of XLSX, which is the Excel Excel file, we're going to read in the contents of the Excel file, we're going to create a new column in the Excel file. And then we're putting in the name of the file as the value. So I've shown you earlier that on the last column, we had a column called notes right here. 
and then it contains the value, which is the file name right here, so that we know which file the contents here are coming from, okay? And then once it has created a new column called notes, the contents of the particular Excel file, which is read in at each iteration, like as an example, if we started from 1950, the contents of 1950 will be appended to the data frame. And the data frame here, DF, is the empty data frame. And so at each iteration, the contents of each file will be appended or added to this empty data frame one by one. And so over the iteration of all of the files, all of the Excel file, therefore all contents of the Excel files will be added one by one into this particular empty data frame. And so by the end of the for loop, the contents of each and every Excel file will be appended to the data frame here. And then finally, the data frame will contain the merged contents. And then at the end of the function here, we're going to be returning it as DF. And so upon calling the Excel file merge function, using input argument, which is the input zip file name, we're going to get the contents of DF, which is the merged contents of all of the Excel files, okay? Let's go to lines 42 and 48 here. So we see here that these custom functions will allow us to generate the links that you see at the bottom. So let me show you. Let me drag and drop the Excel file in the zip format here, submit it, and it's performing the merger. So after the display of the merged content here, you're gonna be seeing two links at the bottom, which is made possible by these two custom function. And so the first link will allow you to download the CSV file, which is right here. And the second link will allow you to download the Excel file, which will be returned at the bottom here, right here, the Excel file, okay? Let's have a look on lines 57 until 65. So in the main panel that you're going to see right here, we have the if and else condition. So if we have uploaded the file by dragging and dropping to this area here, to this upload box. And so if we drag and drop the zip file into this upload box, the if condition will be triggered. However, upon loading the application, from scratch here, it's going to run the else condition. And so therefore it will be displaying a waiting for zip file to be uploaded. And so upon uploading the zip file into this upload box and clicking on the submit button right here. So if the submit button is clicked, it will perform the following. It will apply the Excel file merge function on the uploaded file and the contents of the file will be assigned to the DF variable. And it's gonna be printing out the header here, which is merged data, which we will see. Let me show you. So it's printing out merged data. It's gonna be displaying right here. And then it's gonna be accompanied by the contents of the data frame, st.write the contents of the data frame. So here's the merged data header here. And then finally, it's gonna be using Markdown to create the download link of the CSV file, which is made possible by the file download function and the Excel file, which is made possible by the XL download function. Okay, and so feel free to modify this. As I mentioned earlier, you could aggregate the data based on the player, based on the team, based on the position, or even based on the year. You could do various feature transformation. You could calculate averages of teams for the various parameters that you see here and modify this to your heart's content. And so feel free to drop a comment to the links of your GitHub repo containing the modifications of this particular web application. And so I love to see them and I'll be happy to provide some high level feedback. And so I hope that you're finding value in this video and please help us smash the like button so that YouTube can recommend this video to others who are interested in the topic. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and also hit on the notification bell so that you'll be notified of the next video. And so as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science and please enjoy the journey.